let's just like talk a little bit more about Alchemy itself. So mm -hmm. it's an infrastructure as code library. It's written in TypeScript. Tell us more. Uh, what else makes it unique? Right. So TypeScript, TypeScript is native is great, but uh, the most unique thing I'd probably say about it, apart from just decoupling from the whole ecosystem entirely, is it's not a complex graph abstraction. So if you look at things like the CDK or Pulumi, for example, what you're doing is you're creating classes that abstract over infrastructure that will exist later on, right? So I write new function in Pulumi. That, that's, that, that new function doesn't exist yet, right? Until I run Pulumi apply or Pulumi up, right? So what I end up doing is instead of being able to just say, create a function and then print out the functions ARM. I have to work with this lazy abstraction. It's called output, right? So instead of getting a string, I get an output of string. And now it's, it's not a promise. It's kind of close to a promise, but you can't await it. So you, uh, you have to chain everything together with dot apply, right? And that limits what you can do. So with Alchemy, I reverse that um, to just make it async functions memoized async functions. It's actually closer to a durable workflow if you know how those work. But basically it's, it's a function you call, a very light wrapper around it that keeps track of the state and goes, hey, last time I was called with these properties and now I'm called with these properties. They haven't changed, so I won't do anything this time. I'll just return the old output, for example. Or, hey, I've never been called before, so let me create it. Or at the end of the program, I just check, hey, these are all the things we created. And those two functions don't exist anymore. So I delete them, right? So what I like about that is now it's just standard programming. Like everyone knows what an async function is. And I can chain them together and generate infrastructure that's conditional. So based on the output of one function, I might generate something else. That's not possible with Pulumi, basically, or it's very hacky with Pulumi. Everything has to be statically declared. Um, in Pulumi, so with uh, Alchemy, is just async function, so I can nest them. So, I, uh, for example, in the CDK, there's a concept called the L2 construct, right? Which are there's the baseline cloud formation primitives, and then we build nice friendly layers on top. For example, here's a uh, a service that has a load balancer and a container and a VPC and whatever, right? Uh, and they use they use constructs inside it. In Alchemy, each resource can just use other resources inside it natively. So you implement a resource, call the functions to create the VPC, create the load balancer, and it's just normal programming. Yeah. So my goal is really, I just want infrastructure as code to be JavaScript. No fanciness, no crazy CLI, no complex opinions. It's just a JavaScript library. Yeah, the way you describe that right there, where it's like you have this thing that runs over it and only redoes stuff as it needs to, it's, it feels as a front-end developer, a lot like react to me yeah. where you have like you've almost created a virtual dom for the infrastructure layer where you write this simple javascript on top and it handles the diffing and the updating below it is the exact same pattern which is so this is more speculative but i'm pretty excited about like what could someone come up with if they tried to basically run alchemy as part of a react application because it really is the same it's run the infrastructure get the get what is meant to be the new state, compare it with the old state and re-render. Like it is the exact same pattern. This pattern is actually basically the pattern of all the best products in the world to solve the best problems. So like React does it for reactive UIs. It's like, oh, I don't have to worry about all these event handlers and crazy stuff. I just write a program that produces the DOM that I want. People have become very used to that. It's very powerful. Uh, but there's another place where it's used, which is, a durable workflows. So durable workflows is, hey, I need to run something that might, it's a JavaScript program that might run for three years. And at any point in time, it might wake up again and, and, and for example, uh, process a payment for the monthly payments for some user or something like that. Um, it works the same way. It's just a program that you write the workflow in and it will, every time it needs to make a new decision, it just runs from scratch again, right? And if something's already been done, it just skips it. Uh, and alchemy is basically the same thing. It's just memoization of things that have been done and just a little bit of intelligent decision-making as you go. Same, same pattern. Yeah. Yeah. We talked to Sunil Pai, one of the people that worked on the React team way back. And he mentioned that they had a very similar 
demo where they had like, it was way before React server components, but they had an application where they like specified a database as a component. So you like your whole app, the whole way down infrastructure to front end was just this one React application. So it's super cool idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty psyched about like, that sounds like infrastructure from code, which was yeah. the whole thing back in the day. It's kind of a punch card, that product that I mentioned before, although punch cards execution is way outdated now. I'm pretty excited about Alchemy enabling those kinds of use cases because now that infrastructure as code is not the weight of the universe, you know, it's not these three tools strung together. It's just a JavaScript function that by the way, is designed to uh, tree shake perfectly. So it, it's probably a few kilobytes at most. We can just co-locate our application code with that infrastructure and have a conditional in there. It's like, if environment is you know live, don't do anything, just return the value. And now you've got infrastructure front code and I don't need to build it. It's just JavaScript. You can just use the baseline primitives or generate your own. And that starts to feel more like an ecosystem that can thrive, right? It's not getting in your way. You can generate what you want. You can run it anywhere. You're not going to pay expensive bundling and have to figure out hacks around that. It's just pure JavaScript. I want to dig more into the, to the, like, why you think the pure JavaScript part is important and like the embeddability. But before we go to that, like, I just want to also highlight something. So you were talking about your history and you've, you've touched a lot of different programming languages. You've been very deep. Uh, and as we like look at the uh, sort of infrastructure as code ecosystem, but like the services uh, ecosystem in general, we see a lot more TypeScript adoption, like mm -hmm. a lot more. Um, in both infrastructure as code, but also in just like configuration, like more people writing in configuration, just building services in general. And before we sort of move on to the architecture of Alchemy, it's just like, why do you think TypeScript is winning this race? And like, why did you think, okay, you know, I've used like Scala, like low functional programming, but like TypeScript is obviously the language to choose here. Like, why is that the case for you? Yeah. So. Starting with Scala, I, I, I was a big Scala 2 nerd, and there was this project called Shapeless that really caught my attention, which was really clever metaprogramming for generating generic themes, right? So you could, for example, define a class that's got three properties, and it would automatically at compile time analyze that and generate, for example, how to serialize this in DynamoDB or not, for example. Uh, it was a little bit like Jackson and Java, if you remember those days, but without reflection, it wasn't runtime inference. It was, it was compile time inference. And I just got really obsessed with that. And I started to learn more about functional programming and a little bit of category theory tidbits and became obsessed with compilers and programming languages. But then the, the, the CDK came along and forced me into TypeScript, right? Like it was built in TypeScript. I was like, all right, like, let me learn this language. I've never, I've never been a front end person, but I was like, okay, I'm compelled now because I'm very much into infrastructure. So that brought me into TypeScript, roughly like TypeScript 3.5, I think. And I immediately became obsessed. I'm like, oh my God, because I always struggled with Scala's, like Shapeless was a hack. It wasn't really, you know, designed, like Scala wasn't really designed to do that. They were using a primitive called implicits to hack this up. And now with TypeScript, I was like, oh, there is literally a programming language at the type level here. This is everything I've wanted. But on top of that, what's so cool about TypeScript is you can be, you can be sort of lazy, right? Like <laughs> if you, if you can build an abstraction that doesn't really meet reality and then just cast to any inside your, inside your abstraction, give someone a really nice type safe interface to it, but underneath, you know, it can be a mess, right? With Scala, that was pretty hard. Like everything had to be like statically correct. Uh, at least in my experience. So the, the the dynamic nature of it with a really great static type system, I think one out. Uh, but, but another point on that is I've just done a year in Python. And one of the things that I noticed is like why Python is struggling compared to, for example, TypeScript is because everyone can just follow latest TypeScript. Everyone can just always be on the latest version of language, use the best language features and type system. But with Python, the types are tied to the runtime. So you can only use types that are supported by the runtime that you're going to support. And I think that erasure, that, that type erasure philosophy that TypeScript's had and being like straight passed through to JavaScript has really helped it thrive as a language. Like everyone can just follow whichever version of the language they want. Uh, 
But to your specific point about why it's great for configurations, like, well, because it's JSON, right? It's basically programmable JSON with a type system that you can do more than just checking you've got the right properties. You can encode the semantics of your tool or your service in there. Uh, for example, I wrote a type, it's called TypeSafe DynamoDB. It's another library that I built, which is a type system implementation of DynamoDB semantics. So it'll type check the content of the query. So if you write an expression and you don't have the expression attribute value, it'll catch that. I think that's why TypeScript is winning. You can see that now. 